Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. In the last ServiceNow toolbox, we talked about how to put pretty hyperlinks and formatted text into your work notes. And somebody asked me if that's possible to do in emails as well. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit easier and we're gonna show you how. So to set this up, I've just created a notification record that gets triggered off an event. And I put an event in the event registry called programs.weekly.summary. Now, if you're not familiar with system events and what they're good for, check out in the top right hand corner, there's going to be a link to a video I did. It's also going to be in the description below. Also, if you're unfamiliar with mail scripts, this is going to be the episode that's finally going to teach you how to do scripting and then embed the results into emails that you're going to send. So as I said, we have a notification here and that notification triggers on the event program.weekly.summary. I've also gone ahead and fired that event because what we want to do is use this preview notification UI action. So we're not having to walk through logic or deploy events again and again and again, just to test. All we need to do is save our mail script and look at the output. So here we are on the mail script and let's just walk very gently from less complicated to more complicated in our scripts. So the first thing we're going to do is a mail script that builds in a line for every project in a given program. Here we are inside the mail script. So I've got a variable called line builder and that's just going to be the thing that creates the big collection of lines that we're gonna to post to the email. Then we have a variable called PRJ links. That's gonna be a glide record to the project table. And we're gonna add a line where the primary program is event.parm2. And this is one of the cool things you can do with notifications that are event driven is if you're building mail scripts off of them, you can feed it uh, properties of the event. So when I actually triggered the event to launch this notification, I gave it the event name, I sent it the program object, I sent the email I wanted to send to, and I sent parm2 as program.sysid. Okay, then I'm just gonna print out a title. It's gonna have template.print open project summary. And then in the while loop, we are just going to make the line builder have whatever the number of the project link is, plus a space and a dash and a space, plus the short description of the project in that iteration. And then of course we add a plus slash n to make sure that the next line is put in the line below. We're gonna template print, that's mail script speak for actually write it down. And let's see what this does. We're gonna save it. I'm gonna come back to my notification. I'm gonna hit preview notification and we're gonna use an existing event. I'll pick it from the list of events that have been fired. And it's got the title and a list of the projects. We should have a slash N on that title because it's just written that project right after it. I'll come back here, I'll add a slash N save that and when i rerun the preview it looks a lot better okay let's start jazzing up the title and doing some text formatting here we are at the second iteration of this script and the only change i've made here is within the template print for the title we've gone ahead and put some html tags in there for the text so formatting text with html within a mail scripts is as easy as adding the html codes directly into the template print you don't have to use that code and code format that you did when you were trying to do this in work notes so let's save this i'll go back and preview notification again and we see that the title is a lot better looking it's got a uh, header two format to it and it's underlined exactly as we wanted. Okay, ramp it up the difficulty a little bit. Now we're going to embed hyperlinks for each of those projects. It's not enough that we tell somebody an email, here's a list of projects that are related to this record that we're sending you an email about. Let's embed the hyperlinks so that they can go right from email into ServiceNow and see the records in question. I think embedding hyperlinks into text and emails is probably one of the most underrated things you can do to improve the quality of notifications in ServiceNow. Okay, so what we've done here is I've started breaking out line builder. Truthfully, you can put this all on one line. I just like doing uh, different things in different lines and adding them all together with plus equals. It just makes it feel cleaner and easier for me. So it's kind of doing one thing at a time. So the first line is just saying, hey, let's dump the number, add a space dash space, and that's all I'm gonna do. Then immediately we're gonna add to it the hyperlink. 
Now, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time and break down how I do hyperlinks because it's a little bit tricky when you're looking at all these quotes and double quotes and, and pluses and all this stuff. So let's actually break it down. So let's just imagine, let's just write out a full uh, AH reference as if we were coding in HTML. So let's just go AH ref equals, and I wanna send this thing to a relative URL that is the project's direct link. So if I do this, and I know I want uh, like a big long sys ID. I'm just gonna fake it. And then I know I wanna say target equals blank. And then I want the thing to be the short description. I want that link, I want the words to be short description and I want the link embedded into it. And then slash A. So this is all the stuff I know I'm gonna have to do in order to formulate that URL. So now what we have to do is break it up because really it's just a chunk of text right now in the code and it's gonna render it as HTML. So I know I'm gonna to have to get this sys ID from somewhere, right? So let's wrap single quotes and this editor drops double quotes at a time. So, I'm... so we've wrapped single quotes around that href. And so it's gonna be this block of text plus something and that something is going to be uh, the project sys ID, right? So let's just give some space for that. Then let's wrap the rest of what we have in single quotes. And the reason I'm being real specific about single quotes is because to actually write out the HTML, we need double quotes for this blank part, right? So we gotta make sure we're using a different type of quote around the outside of that. Let's go in here and drop our project sys ID, project links ID. That's the project sys ID that's gone through this while loop from this glide record. Now it's going to take that project sys ID, blast it into this line of text that's gonna contain the uh, relative URL. Now let's continue on with the rest. So we have this block of text that's target equal blank. And I know I want to put my own short description in there, so let's end the let's end the quotes. So this is its own thing, and I know I'm going to put a plus and something in there. Let's take out the short description, and we know we're going to have to make this its own block. And what do I want to put in here? I want to put the project links dot short description. It's a bit of a pain in the butt but you gradually get used to where you gotta put the quotes in to break it all apart to make sure that the specific information you want is inserted in. So let's clear that little exercise out. We've got line builder here. It's starting off by saying, just get me the this project's number and break it with a space dash space. Then it's adding to that and saying, add in this hyperlink. It's gonna use a relative URL we're gonna put in the project sys ID and also the project short description at various points in that ahref so that it renders as the short description looking like a hyperlink. And then we are going to print this thing. So let's save this. Here we are back at the notification. Let's preview the notification. Okay, for the next scenario, we want to put in little colored emojis to tell us the status of the project in each of those lines that we're putting to the email. So you'll notice I've created a new variable called status dot. It's just undefined for right now. When we get into the while loop, status dot calls a function called get status color and it feeds it the status of whatever project we're in in this iteration of the loop. So let's see what that get status color function is. Here we are at the function. It is going to receive something called that we're gonna call status. So that's the parameter of the function. And it's gonna create an object here called status color map. And it's just gonna be name value pairs. And what we wanna do in this function is return the object in status color map at the status that we give it. See square brackets mean at a certain position. In array, it would be like position uh, a number, a position zero, one, two, three. For an object, it's the position of the property. So let's grab um, whatever the status we give. So it'll be a color, it'll be red, yellow, or green, and it will send us back one of these emojis. If you wanna know where to get good emojis, I go to getemoji.com, and that's got nice big pictures of every valid emoji. In our case, I looked up circle as a search term and we got a wide range of circles, including green, orange, red, whatever we want. Okay, so let's save this mail script. Let's go back to our notification and hit preview notification. And now we've got beautiful emojis on the lines that we've printed inside that email. Looking better already. 
Okay, the final scenario we'll run through is we want to put formatted text on the end of each line that talks about when the last time each of those projects was updated. The idea is the program manager is going to look at this email. They'll know exactly which projects they want to click on and go to based off of its status and when the last time it was updated. So we see in line 29 here that I've got a day since update variable declared and undefined. And then once I get into the while loop, it's going to call a function called get days since update and it's going to feed that function projects.sys updated on which is the last updated date of the project of the project that we're currently iterating through on this while loop okay let's see what that function does the first thing it's going to do is declare uh, now as equal to a new glide date and time if you just say new glide date time with no parameters inside there it just creates right now as a date time record then because I'm sending this function an object called last update, I'm never ever quite certain what I'm being passed. So I like to be extra careful about the data type. And so I'm going to force that last updated, even when I'm expecting a date and time, I'm going to force it to be a new glide date and time via this variable called force date time. It's going to be a new glide date time with the parameter of last update, forcing it to be a date time. Then we're going to declare a variable called dur duration and it's gonna be a glide date time that subtracts force date time from now. Then what we're gonna do is declare a variable called days part, and that's going to be duration dot get day part. So I'm expecting something that is expressed in days. Highly encourage you guys to check out the glide date time API documentation on developer.servicenow.com or on docs if you can find it. Um, I'll have links in the description below, but there's all kinds of goodies in there, some of which I've only uh, learned about in the past few days. All right, then we're going to ask a question. Hey, is, is days part greater than five? If so, we want to return this text not updated in and then it's going to create an HTML tag, span where the style is the color tomato, and then we're gonna put our days part in there as the number that's actually gonna render in that style. Then we are going to close those style tags and add the word days, and then we are going to return days part. And then the way that's gonna look like is inside of our line builder, we're gonna have our hyperlink with our project sys ID, our target of blank, our short description, and then it's going to have our day since update, and then it's gonna force a new line. Then it's gonna print it all off. Let's update this mail script, and let's go to our notification. It strikes me now that I've gone all the way through this video, and I actually haven't even shown you how this notification calls the mail script, which is super important. So let's go to the what will it contain tab, and there you'll see, you can write whatever you want, and then whenever you want to create a mail script, like, let's just put this text in here. This is the result of our mail script. See below. So I'm going to have that text and you call mail scripts by going dollar sign mail underscore script colon. And then whatever the name of your mail script is, in our case, it's project status links. Let's save this. And now let's preview the notification. All right, so we see the text that we added above the mail script. We've got the title exactly how we formatted, and we've got the project numbers, our emoji pips, our embedded URLs, and we've got that block of text where it says 11, uh, 42 days on just the projects that hadn't been updated in that amount of time. For the rest of them, I just had zero. Probably could have designed text better than that, but you get the idea. And there you have it, folks. The same thing we did in the last video where we beautified our work notes a little bit can be done in emails. And this is really, really, really handy if you're sending emails that have kind of a collection of records in them. And this happens all the time in SPM. Here's all the risks, issues, decisions, actions you might want to deal with. Here's all the projects, uh, tasks within your project that you might want to deal with. Here's all the projects in your program that you might want to deal with. So I find this invaluable. Hope you learned a thing or two in this as well, and we will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list, and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.